desire those type of men. I don't really desire them that much because I don't want to fulfill what they desire. And one of the things you mentioned it the other night is you got to share that man. A lot of times that man, if he makes 400,000 or more, he may have another woman. And mm -hmm. I know I cannot deal with that. So I think a lot of women sometimes say they want these men, but they've never dated it because if they had, they wouldn't be just focusing on the money. There's a lot of women that have men with money, but they're not always happy either. I don't judge by what women want. If you want to focus on your career, do that. But see, one thing that women have not been told in this country is there's cost to all of it. You can't have it all. Men can't have it all. They're trade-offs and choices. If you chose to focus on your career, I am all for that. Do it. But it comes at a cost of your prime childbearing years. I don't make human beings the way they are. So this is, this, is, this, is, this, is the, this is the choice women have to make. I, listen, I, I wholeheartedly agree. And like, and I was I was engaged in, to my college sweetheart. I went to Hampton, and I chose to focus on my career instead of becoming a wife. I have okay. no regrets. Okay. Um, and just as I hear what you're saying with statistics, one of my best friends just got married last year. She's pregnant, do any day now, and she's 41, and she's a black woman. So all I'm saying is, yes, you're right. Maybe the statistics aren't there, but in my reality, that... Anecdotal evidence doesn't change the fact. Huh? Anecdotal evidence doesn't change the fact. You know people like you. That does not change the reality. Well, well, well okay. I'm We're gonna... actually having a conversation about women having babies in their 40s. That's how warped we've become in the black community because we cannot get it together in our prime mating and marrying years. Because we value, because so many of our women value these so-called careers. Now, I don't doubt that you have a career, but I got to let you know how many women I've talked to over the countless years who talk, call their job a career. Most people have jobs. Most people don't have careers. And it seems to be, why can Becky Marisol, Myling, and I knew all go out and have jobs and careers just like black women have jobs and careers and still be able to spin that plate and find a husband? Why can every other race of women seem to be able to do that? But black women are doing it at a one out of four ratio. And the next closest women are white women who are married twice as much as you are. Uh, and that's married to anybody. You're not marrying anybody. Can I respond to that? I, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. But I also think oh that um, if women are realistic and they are open to dating and maybe not always focusing on the money and maybe to give up some things on their list, it is possible. I know you said yourself your mother got married at 50. There's people that do still find love in their 40s. And I just think that I don't want women to feel hopeless. And her three sisters died alone. Huh? And her three sisters on the way to dying alone. Well, uh, speaking of dying alone, I had a mother who wasn't married when she died, and she didn't die alone. She she died. Do you think, with, do you think black women have been given? The, do you think black women have been given the accurate message for life? I will say I I will say no. I will say no. I'll give you that. But I will say this too. I, I just a lot of things I do agree with you on, Kevin, and that's why I came on your platform. Um, but I will say the die alone thing. I don't want to give women. I don't think women should be fear. fear um, oh, them. I do. I think fear. I think I think we well, need some healthy fear. Because okay. here's the thing: we, when we do this whole coddling, don't act like it is what it is. No, we need to tell you smoking causes cancer. Right. We don't need to tell you smoking causes bait. We don't smoking makes you happy. Okay. Because because I'm looking at our community. Black men are at the bottom. Black women are at the bottom. Black boys are at the bottom. We are the only, you're the only group of women who stand out proudly saying, I don't need a man to make it through life. No other group or race of women is so bold to stand outside and say, put all the pressure of the world on me because I don't need him. What? I don't believe that. I believe men are very important. I love the black man. Uh, my father it's our culture. Okay, I agree with that. Let me ask you this, Kevin. Do you think a woman, because I hear you talk about settle, and I always wondered your answer to this. Should a woman be with a guy who might be cheating on her, not cheating her the best? Do you think it's better to have a man than to not have a man at all? Yeah, I'm not, see, that's a disingenuous question. See, when you come in setting the table as if is the choice between a negative and a man, I reject that question. Why don't you give it the other way around? Do you think a woman should have a man who actually 
she can build with and partner with certain stuff. Why come in assuming bad faith to begin with? No, I'm no. not. I'm no. Not. Yes, you did. You came okay, in and gave me a, a negative versus having a man. And that means I, if he's going to do this, should she choose that? Why don't you give me the other side? Give me the good faith argument. Well, okay, well, no, there is a good faith argument, but I just heard Maybe. you say several times. I think sometimes when no, what I'm saying is why didn't you come to the door giving the good faith argument? Why do well, I have to ask you for it? I don't celebrate you. You're supposed, to, you're supposed to celebrate him. But what I'm asking you, Kevin, is this, and I'm not trying to be combative. I'm just simply asking you a question, and I'm I'm really trying not to be combative here. Is there some you women? Have to try. Right. There's some women who date men who might not be treating them the best, and I always just wonder because I know you you preach a lot about settling and being with men. And well, I, just, I, I talk a lot about settling because that's what a lot of women talk about all the time when they really ain't settling. See, what I'm saying is I asked you the question. Okay, I'm sorry. One of the two things wrong in our community is, one, so many of our women come into, into, into interaction with black men in bad faith. Yep. You assume the worst, the negative. Oh. Ma'am, go rewind this part. You gave me an example. Do you think a woman should settle for a man that's cheating on her, abusing her, something and so forth, in order to just have a man? That is a disingenuous French toast yep. ass position when you could have easily come in and escape yep. with a positive good faith. Do you think it would be better for a woman to be with a man who she can actually live with and cooperate with and build a life with or have nothing? You could have made that choice to come in the door, good faith or bad faith. You chose to come. No, you chose to come in bad faith because that is the default position in our community. I'm used to desire those type of men. I don't really desire them that much because I don't want to fulfill what they desire. And one of the things you mentioned it the other night is you gotta share that man. A lot of times that man, if he makes 400,000 or more, he may have another woman. And mm -hmm. I know I cannot deal with that. So right. I think a lot of women sometimes say they want these men, but they've never dated it because if they had, they wouldn't be just focusing on the money. There's a lot of women that have men with money, but they're not always happy either. Well, okay. so. The follow-up question to that would be, if you, that's the kind of man you would like to have, you just don't like that aspect of it. Well, I would say this, um, I'm I'm 41, right? So when I listen to the women, when I was in the 30s, when I had the girls come up here, they remind me of myself. Because I was like, he got to have a lot of money. Um, he got to take care of all the bills. That's what I was on. And I run in those circles, but what I've learned is a lot of those men just couldn't be faithful. So then I learned, well, that's my deal breaker. Faithfulness is my deal breaker. So, so I've been blessed so my, 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 my The question I have then okay. is, because I hear what you're saying, but then I also like, yeah, uh, that sounds good. Okay. Because uh, you, 41 years old, married, any kids? Nope, I froze my eggs though. So I got a safety net just in case. So, so you're, you're accustomed to a certain standard of life. This is true. True. Uh, and if a man is making the median of what a black man is making, forty-two thousand five, he can't afford your standard of life. So is that my problem? Uh, see, that no, it's it's the reality of the world. See, what happens far too often, especially in our communities, black women wait too long to get married. You wait till you're too old. You wait till you have too much experience, and your your experience and your income has gone up, and that is inversely proportional to your sexual marketplace value. So can I speak to that? So let me let me finish okay. making the example because okay. I hear women come on and say, you know what, that high value thing, I really don't want that because I don't want to have to share him. All right, but then are you going to be able to look at a man making $45,000 a year and respect him to the same level that a high value man would be respected? respect a man who's hardworking and as long as he doesn't try to minimize me in any way now that's that's the biggest thing if, if he's okay with me being my full self you didn't answer whether or not you respect him to the same level you respect the high value man now you guys pay close attention she never comes out right and answer any damn question she gives a monologue that shit is so annoying, ladies. Just answer the freaking question. Yes or no. Well, 
Well, let me tell you this. I'm going to say yes, only because I'm going to tell you this. I've dated how value men. I've dated the men with the Rolls Royces and all the cars and all the glitz and glamour. Mm -hmm. And they always thought because they had the cars and the glitz and glamour that you got to bow down to them. And I get, I get it, but I'm so, talking about the men who's working at the post office. Right. I would say, now, I'm going to tell you my requirements. I want you to be attractive. So if you're a guy that's working at the post office and you're Did he ask her about appearance? You see what I'm saying? She just want to talk about what she wants to talk about. She's just overlooking. Attractive and you. Hold on, let me time out, time out. Hey. Why do you want to be attractive? I can't have nothing. I'm uh, no, let me explain. See, this is what's so, what's so wrong for so many of our women. You're supposed to be the attractive one, not us. Okay. Black women today have atavistic mating standards, very primitive, meaning I want you to look good. So he can make $40,000 a year as long as he look good. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that um, he can make $40,000 a year. I'm not. That's what most black men money. make, $42,500. Okay, so Kevin, what do, so are you saying in your perspective that it's over for me? Then I don't no, have No, it's to not. No, what I'm saying okay. is your price is too high. How is my price too high? Okay, uh, uh, well, well, first of all, you asked me and I'm going to, uh, you're, you're 41 and unmarried. Right, you're freezing by air. choice, by choice. Yeah, that's, uh, no. Well, no, I can say that. I was once engaged when I was in college. Okay, you, you, okay, you, no. I just got uh, out see, of this, this your go ahead. But, 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 but do you understand that example I just gave? The I, inverse I of course in a relationship. I understand, but I can I can I speak now? Because I was being I'm being respectful. This is your platform, so I definitely want to honor your rules. Um, I just got out of a relationship in January, and I could be married right now if that was my goal. But I would rather be happy than just married to say I have a husband. And I don't think that should be looked down upon. I don't think that's and that's that's my honest truth. You could you know feel away, but that's the honest truth. I was in a relationship that he wanted. How long me to you? How long were you? How long were you in it? We were, we were together since last year, eight months. Okay. And he was ready to be married very soon, very early on. And I I don't want to be married just to be married. I'm not going to live with fear and say, oh, okay. So do you want to be married? Huh? You want to go back to what you want. <laughs> you control access to your body. And for a time frame, women control access to whether or not kids are born. But see, what... Older women, especially accomplished women, have a hard time accepting is your value has a, sh a shelf life. After 35 year geriatric pregnancy, if you met a man that you found that you thought was the bee's knees and he wanted three children, you can't carry it. Okay, but Kevin, I will say this, right? Can I just say that? Is that I, true? I, or, I, I, I agree with you. I'm not. So, I'm not so he was so so. He would have, so either he would have to forego having the children in his legacy, or he'd have to go find someone who could. Or it could be a man that might already have children and doesn't want to. Not my example. That's not my example. That's not, that's, that's a different example. See, can I just say this? I, 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 I respect your insight. I really do. That's why I came on your platform. Okay. But I'm not going to allow what you think is going to be for my life to be my life. Okay, if you allow what I, I don't know you, lady. Right, is that well? My name is Kendra. You said my I don't name know, earlier. A lady, Kendra, ma'am. I don't know you. Okay. So, so, and the thing is, I'm not going to allow you to start getting upset because I'm not, uh, Kevin. I'm not upset. I've never. Look, I'm not upset. You came to my platform and asked. You asked me my opinion. Okay, so to tell me what you're not going to allow with me to do, that's not necessary. I, I wasn't trying to be rude. I was just ultimately. But what would you call it? What would you call it? I'm not going to allow what you say to do what. Because I mean, listen, I, I I hear you, but I don't. There's plenty of women that I know that have had babies in their 40s, that have gotten married in their 40s. It it, it can happen. So you talking black women? Yes, I'm talking black. Yeah, women. one in four black women were married. One in four black women were married in their lifetime. So you telling about the aged black women who marry after 40 and have babies? I, I'm, of, sorry. I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm sorry. That is, unfortunately, and here's the thing, if you're waiting till your 40s to marry and have babies, you did something wrong in your 20s and 30s. Yeah. I mean, well, I, I will yes. say this. I focus on my career, which I know you feel could be something wrong. I have no regrets. I have no saying is, yes, you're right. Maybe the statistics aren't there, but in my reality, in my world, I know women I that- Anecdotal evidence doesn't change the fact. Huh? 
anecdotal evidence doesn't change the fact. You know people like you. That does not change the reality. Well, well, well okay. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not taking away from that. What I'm, what I'm saying is, ma'am. I'm just saying that. Listen to what we're doing in the black. Listen to what we're doing in the black community. Take it away from you. Take it away from your friends. We're actually having a conversation about women having babies in their 40s. That's how warped we've become in the black community because we cannot get it together in our prime mating and marrying years. Because we value, because so many of our women value these so-called careers. Now, I don't doubt that you have a career, but I gotta let you know how many women I've talked to over the countless years who talk, call their job a career. You gotta, most people have a job. Most people have jobs. Most people don't have careers. And it seems to be, why can Becky, Marisol, Myling, and Anu all go out and have jobs and careers just like black women have jobs and careers and still be able to spin that plate and find a husband? Why can every other race of women seem to be able to do that? But black women are doing it at a one out of four ratio. And the next closest women are white women who are married twice as much as you are. This is what we do too often. We do this too often, acting as though women don't have accountability and consequences in the men they choose. No, man. Okay, I'll let you go on for 30 okay. seconds and you say a man should be celebrated. I don't know why black women come in and talk about men should be celebrated. You're supposed to celebrate the man. He's not supposed to celebrate you. What, what other race of women runs around talking about them? You need to celebrate them. What are we celebrating? What? Who's on top? Who leads? Well, Kevin, okay. Who's please. on top? Who leads? Um, I, I, I do yeah, say please. that, yes, the man leads. But I have to just speak for the men that I know that are happily married. They celebrate their wives. They do. All right. Okay. But then, um, listen. You I can sell, I, okay, man, but who? Okay. This notion is toxic to come in. It's toxic to like, yes, it is. Because it keeps you, it keeps women with this overinflated stuff that they need to be celebrated to where asking women I yesterday had a woman on instagram thinking that being a traditional housewife was telling about slavery just because she had to actually cook a damn meal i saw that so uh that's a woman that shares your reflection right how she's black oh so it's my reflection okay that's what yes saying. so my notion the, the notion the way so many women talk is though you're some like you're some sort of god or deity that's supposed to be celebrated the way we do it over here is men of value lead women of women of value follow them you celebrate your man you praise your man what y'all do on your side is good for you hope it works for you but more people on this side are winning more people on that side got opinions and no husbands especially no husbands they value so you talk about russell wilson i don't know many men on this side that respect russell wilson not because he married a woman with a child it's because he's a simp why is he a simp why is he a simp? Uh, because that's an entire program. And here's the thing. How about this? Because the men say he is. Well, okay, as a female, then I want to sit. Because if there's a man- Well, that's then go ahead. Then you, so, so, so you want to have a, so again, and thank you guys, listen to what she said. And she, wants mean, she, wants clear, she wants to sit. She wants to sit. She wants to sit. Because, because a man, a man like Russell Wilson, who put Sierra on a pedestal, pedestalizing a woman is, I said this three weeks ago, show me a culture or a race of competitive people where the women were pedestalized above the men and show me a competitive civilization. You don't. Men's purpose needs to be pedestalized, not the female. It doesn't mean that the one, see, this is a problem. So many women in the black community want to be sitting up like this queen. And if a man is sitting up here looking at you, he cannot fight everybody else, compete with everybody else and defend the world. Sorry, it doesn't work that way. And that's why so many women, black women, are by themselves because they, if they can't be treated like the queens that they think they are, then they'd rather have nothing. And no one's going to stop you. Because if it ain't, because uh, the problem ain't black men. It ain't black men because ain't no man marrying you. When it says one out of four black women were married, that means anybody. So your career, your job, your accomplishments, whatever is walking around making you feel great and wonderful about yourself, that works well until you're about 55 or 60. Then what? What's about the rest of life? Are you just asking me that direct question? The, the point, the ultimate oh. point is we get nowhere when we have women who still think they should be celebrated ahead of the men. Well, I think they should celebrate each other. And we, well, maybe we have who to- Who should be celebrated? Who should be, who should lead? 
I don't I don't mind the man being the head of the household. What do you don't mind? <laughs> that was the wrong answer. <laughs> like I think if a man Okay, so who should throw the ball on so who should so who should so who should handle the ball uh, on, on on the offense side of football? I don't mind the quarterback handling. Who should throw the pass? I don't mind the quarterback. Or oh, is that the quarterback's job? Right. Just okay, I thought I, I thought I was giving you the. I I think we're giving the same answer. No, no we're not. We're I, not because I, I don't mind. See, it doesn't matter if you mind or not. It's what it should be. Okay, so if the man leaves the household. I don't feel like the female can't have an opinion on anything. Well, she can. <laughs> She's, and I, and I, she's I value think, counsel. And I and I do think the man should be celebrated, but I also think, and I've witnessed it, men who hold their wives to oh. high value and uh, will do anything to protect her and, and will say that they will not be the man they are without that particular woman. I had men, high value men that you call high value men, say things like that. So I know what What did women say about their men? Say again? What did women say about their men? Oh, they love them. They appreciate them. They think that they're their king. So okay. it goes both ways. They're they're celebrating each other. I don't think that's a bad thing. Okay. But people are different when they're around company. That's what she don't understand. He could be giving a real nice speech, and she can give one too, because they don't want people to know how they really feel in their in their relationship. So you can't really go off that. But she, go ahead and keep seeing all these people. I don't, you see so much, but yet you don't have nothing yet. Listen, I appreciate you bringing me on your show. We're going to agree to disagree on a couple of things. Like well, I said, Friday and Saturday. Know, well, well, one way works and one way doesn't. Right. Well, okay. I mean, I will say this. Maybe, well, 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 then maybe I live in some exceptions to the rules because I'm just speaking on the things that yeah, I you do. do. One in four black women were married. You do. And I don't know where you, where you, where you, if you, I don't know, if you just look at my show Monday through Friday, th that's the world. Okay, well, Kevin, can I just say this one thing? I feel like you do give good advice, but sometimes when the women come up here, you make them feel hopeless because there's certain things they can't No, I don't make you feel anything. You're responsible for your own feelings. I'm okay, gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll give you, I'll, 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 I will take that back. I will retract that. But I would say if a woman has, I don't have any kids, but if a woman has children and if she's a certain age and you feel like there's no man out there for her, then what uh, is she? Uh, so if I if I tell a woman what the, the, the statistics are and what the men, that and, and if I tell you what the men are saying, see what you don't seem to realize is if I had a drone follow me every day, when I go out into Atlanta or around this country, how many men are coming say from from high school to on Walker saying thank you. Thank you for telling the truth. Thank you for saying what I can't say. Every day, dozens of men. Can I take a picture with you? Thank you for telling the truth. I wish, I'm so glad. So it ain't what Kevin is saying. And see, the problem is so many women are focusing on the messenger, the tone or whatever. You're losing the fact that you're finally getting some accurate information that ain't telling you don't forget your crown, you a queen and all this other kind of stuff because all those people want to sell your books, sell your dreams. When you talk about leaving hopeless, I think many women who bought this bullshit that these men have been selling and, and then turn around and find out they're cheap just like everybody else and, and ain't the men they say, then they should feel hopeless. At least I'm telling you two plus two is four. Make a decision what you want, two, two, or four. Okay, well that, okay. First of all, you're absolutely right. I know plenty of men that, that speak your praises. Um, like I even said, there's things that you have said that I have agreed with and things that I know high value is a thing with money. Men with money will tell me certain things that you do tell the people on your platform. So I'm not disagreeing with you there. If there's any disagreement that I would ever have is just the accord of women. If they don't, they they can't get married in their 40s. Or they said they couldn't get married. I didn't say they couldn't get married. Okay. What, okay. I say is, what I say is you have to pick a first of all. You're not gonna keep, I hate when you ladies do this. You oversimplify what I say and then expect me to actually hold that. When have I told a woman that she can't get married? Well, I, I know you have this thing called the danger zone and you what does that mean? wants you. What does that mean? The danger zone is she's in a certain age bracket. Like if, if, if she has kids, if she's overweight, oh. and if she's no. a certain age, no. you have- So you, did, so you just proved, no so uh, Kendra? You've just proven that you don't know what I talk about. That's okay, not what the I danger zone means. So, so, no, so, 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 this is what I mean. 
you're a professional woman and you're in, what you're in media too right you don't know yes I am you watch my show I I've do. defined the danger zone countless times and you still were saying something that ain't the danger zone is the years between 27 and 35. okay I okay well this is what I'm saying that's not I, it okay yeah shut up 27 to 35, when a woman needs to really focus like a laser on the outcome she wants. If you want to be married with children, you need to focus like a laser because after age 30, by 35, you hit what's geriatric pregnancy. That's not Kevin. That's nature. That's biology. See, what so many what happens so often is you ladies get triggered. You think you hear what I say. You want to try to make the danger zone be all that stuff, and it was none of that stuff. Okay, You're going well, to try to say, well, you tell a woman that they're this and they're that, and I never say, I don't say that. Okay. Ma'am, you'll be able to go back. I'm going to, this is going to be up. You'll be able to hear what you said. And the fact of the matter is, I don't tell women that they can't. I tell them it's unlikely, depending upon their particular situation. And yes, let me reiterate. If you are a woman over 35, overweight and with children, it is highly unlikely that you're going to find a man making six figures plus who wants to marry you because those men want something in return too. And they typically don't want somebody else's children. Now, is that meaning them hopeless? No, what it's telling them is you've made your choice to allow yourself to reproduce one, two times with or without the benefit of a husband, most of the times without. You've allowed yourself to become the physical shape you are. That's your responsibility. It is not this man's responsibility to lower his standards, settle, when he's had to work to become this this thing. No one gave him this. He deserved to get something from this. But see, we're so busy trying to tell women that they should be celebrated that we forget to think about, what about your men? We need to start celebrating men, black men, and forget the black men. What about the boys? Fuck the men. What are, what are you doing with the boys? All these women with children, what are you doing with your boys? Black boys reading at a fourth grade level. Black boys are behind. Forget us. You don't have to like us. Well, what are you doing with your boys sitting next to your daughters? And more often than not, women are telling their daughters, get an education, do this, that, and so forth. And they're, they're making their sons punks, putting them in Jordans and pink shirts and making them son husbands. And they are raising the same men that you ladies complain about. Prioritize it. Sooner or later, this old nasty, old bad old patriarchy, you're going to have to realize that it's the one thing that's made this world evolve. Okay. Can I, I know we I know you probably have to go to somebody else, but there's just one more thing I want to talk to you about if if you allow it. I know it's your platform. Um the dying talk? alone. Cause I feel like the dying okay. alone thing, I know my uncle died alone. He was mm -hmm. he was a man. My father found him dead a day after he was your dead. father your uncle died alone, he was what? I said he was a man. So I'm not sure when you talk about dying alone, it can go both ways. Now uh, see see, that's what we start that's what we started off today, right? That's exactly what we started off talking about. Is that bad for me to say that? Yes, it is. How? Because this is exactly, you can't make this shit up, guys. It's always when it gets tight on women, we got to make it always go both ways. Yeah. This overgeneralization. See, here's the thing about men dying alone. Men have always died alone. They've been called yeah, weirdos, hermits, loners. But men at least have the decency to leave everybody else the fuck alone. They'll sit in their cabin, sit there eating uh, Hungry Man or Swanson or ramen noodles. They'll, they'll even go homeless. What do you think all these men out here are homeless? Show me groups of homeless women. Nowhere in the world where women are by themselves do they not require and demand stuff from the state. It's killing Japan, it's killing China right now. Women who are unmarried, living in communes or groups of one another, but then they're getting older and older and older and the state cannot support aged, people. It used to be your nuclear family, your extended family who took care of mama and papa and granny and auntie. But now you got adults who are choosing to be independent, making sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year when they're in their thirties or forties, doing decent, but they're not living high on the hog. But you don't have no retirement. Are you away from one illness or one fall from being broke? So dying alone, women don't sit around at fifty or sixty years old and not demand government assistance, benefits of some sort. They are demanding something on the system. So men are still supporting you and that is going to break a society. We cannot afford it. So like it or not, ladies, uh, 
when we start seeing homeless elderly women like we see homeless men, then women will start getting the picture. Because like it or not, the coffins are empty. Right. You can't not go just be a because many women still think, yeah, well, if it get too bad, I'll just go to the church, I'll go to the Jesus house. What about when all that's closed? What about when there's no more resources? Where are those women gonna go? The same place homeless men have always gone. Outside. Do you but do, do you believe that marriage benefits men too? Like I know you I know you do I, be, do I believe what benefits men? Do you feel okay? And because I know I have to ask my questions very correctly with the words. So I know that you believe women, uh, marriage is a benefit to women. Do you believe that marriage is a benefit to men? Like, uh, should men try to find wives? Like, is that important to them? Or? Well, it used to be. It used to be when women valued marriage and valued men. But today, uh, more often than not, women value a man's resources and his ability to provide. That's why I stick in the high value area because I realized that most women don't want a man making forty some odd thousand dollars a year. I asked you that thirty minutes ago. Would you respect a man making forty five thousand forty two thousand dollars a year? And the answer you had was no. You you I got didn't, a, you, I didn't say no. You, no, you didn't know what you did, did not, not do is answer no. I remember what you did. You you, you, you did not answer I respect it directly. Any man, first of all, that has a job. So I did say okay. that. That's not uh -huh. true. But uh, now the answer was ultimately oh, the, the life the lifestyle. Would well, you be you willing said, to lower your you, lifestyle? You said, Are you willing to lower your lifestyle? Oh, because, lower my lifestyle. Yeah, because okay, uh, I'm assuming you make more than forty two thousand dollars a year. Yes. Okay, so if he's making forty two thousand dollars a yeah. year, uh, he's only going to be able to pay whatever percentage of his overall income towards the mortgage, the lights, everything else, and even the car. So if you drive a BMW, what well, he's supposed to get a bicycle? So I'm supposed to get a lower car then? I'm just asking. Cause that's I mean, what a, that's, that's, let me let me explain. That's what a man would have to do. That's what a man, that, that so that's are. what a man that's so that's what a man would have that's what a man would be expected to do. If a man was earning more than his woman, a, the world would expect that man to get him a, a decent car and her a decent car. The world would look at that man crazy if he was driving a car that his income could afford and she was riding around in a Honda Civic and he was riding around in a Mercedes. The world will look at him all kind of craziness. But see now, can I say, can I respond to that, Kevin? That's on the man to have more stability and confidence in himself because if you're worried about the world, ma'am, that, ma'am, that, that, but that, that, that's not. We we can't skip past. No, no, no. You ask, is it on me to lower my lifestyle? Well, if he can't afford to go, see, a man making less than you is not used to going to eat the places you do, go to do the things you do. So you're gonna have to forego doing those things. Unless you want to pay for them, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. And I, I know have, that. I and, and I know, and I'm, and I'm a, and I'm a smart enough man to know that that comes with a woman lacking respect for a man. So we can, we can play around this all we want to. You can say, I don't want to deal with a high value man if they regard you sharing it with somebody. I would rather do this, but this man over here is not going to get high value man respect. And he's going to always know that this dude was really your first choice, but you didn't want to deal with this. And you're not going to put him at the same level of pedestal that, that you would have to put this man on to share or, or honor him like they need to be. So honestly, is there any value to marriage to an average guy today? No, because modern women are not marriageable like the women of before. They're not. Modern women today are not ready to be with their mothers, where well, their grandmothers and their great grandmothers were. They're not. I didn't make it that way. There, there's, I guess, I, I guess I'm gonna live in the exception to the rule area. But you I'm can live in the exception to the rule, and that's fine. You can, at 41 years old, I, I try to do that too. But when I'm talking to people across the board, I, I don't do that. When I talk to 24 year old women who tell me that they could not marry a plumber off rip just because of the title plumber, and she's a political science major, you. you what do you want me to tell them? My thought, though, that I, I built a career, like, that's where I kind of get confused because if I'm not judging the your guy choice. For it's what, your choice. Right. So if it's I'm your choice. Judging, okay, ma'am. Oh, you keep asking me, is it your fault? I don't know why you keep asking me this. Your choice. You choose the outcomes. Here's the, like, here's, here's the bottom line for me and, and you and everybody. Relationships are reflective. You attract what you are. Okay, I agree. So if the man you were with okay. eight months ago wasn't up to standard. You you allowed him in your life for eight eight months, eight valuable months at forty plus. I'll be 
okay though. I don't have other. I, I don't have a problem in that area. And one day I'm gonna get married, Captain, and you're gonna be invited to the wedding. And when I have my you child, act like I, you act like I'm sitting here, child. like you act like I'm sitting here cheering and saying that you're not. But what I'm saying is, modern women's estimation of themselves, modern black women's estimation of yourself is you're more prideful men than than average men. I'm more prideful. Black women are more prideful than black women, in my opinion. My personal opinion have more pride than most men. Well, Let me explain what I mean. Let me explain okay. what I mean. Because you ask a lot of educated sisters, the first thing you lead with is your accomplishments. That is a that is a masculine thing. When women when when women that's not a female, that's not a feminine thing. Go on my show. I got it. Where you think this where you think this song from come from? I'm a PhD. That that came from me asking a woman, "Where's your husband?" What? What? Her husband? I would not choose to be. I'm a PhD. And it, and the thing is, if the ultimate goal for so many of these women is they want to be in a emotionally significant, profound relationship, having their own children, these PhDs, these masters, these careers, especially especially when the truth comes out that they really don't want to have to pay significant bills after they're pregnant and don't want to have to pay but a small portion of the overall financial family load after marriage, then these careers and jobs are just ego projects. Because what you plan on doing is if you get the kind of man you want to get, you're going to jettison it for a period of time anyway while everybody else is working. So these careers are ego projects for most. So if that's what women choose to do, great, do it. But then you come out here at 35, 40 years old and talk about, I can't find no man on my level. All these men are beneath me, yada, 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 yada. And then act like the problems with the men. No, you waited too long. Your price is too high. Your eggs is dried up. You're out of shape. Your attitude is not where it needs to be. And then you think somebody should value your socioeconomic status when it's actually your looks. Feminine cooperative submissive, the things it's always been.